the way that I was pegged on the news with all those Boulder Police Department officers having access to just that part of it where I had been prevented from being allowed from saying my piece there were a lot of other people other than just me who were threatened, harassed, and intimidated for trying to help and they could have come forward too getting their statements and getting them to the police. But there's people like Candace who uh, didn't think it was any big thing. Well, she thought it was a big enough thing for her to shut down her Facebook for a bit. That's a pretty big thing. That's a pretty important key piece of evidence. She was uh, willing to help me after I left... Uh, her house, she was going to coordinate with Miss Jerry and uh, Lana. I gave all of their information to Miss Shelley, hoping that, or Miss Danica, hoping that she would help. I don't know if she was working with Ted and intimidated them or what. Maybe that's just paranoid thinking. But it's difficult not to think paranoid like that, given all the shit that I went through. Aaron Cockerham could uh, blow this whole case wide open just by coming forward about Layla Johnson. I don't have Aaron's number. Katie Cahill, she only calls from a private number so I can't get a hold of her. I can prove that all these people said the things that they said. I can prove it with screenshots from them. The problem is, keep getting Facebook banned from putting up screenshots. Screenshots of evidence. I want my life to be over for a reason. This is fucking torture and getting pretty words. People who want me to eat. That is so fucking insulting. Because these people all could have come forward before I had to do something fucking drastic. When I went down there on the 29th with uh, Peaches, it was pretty important to make a report. The police refused to allow me to make one. They just wanted me to sign a piece of paper saying if I did something illegal they could come after me. Obviously, I hadn't done anything illegal or they'd have come after me. Every time I had somebody who was willing to help, the police did everything that they could to separate me from those people. Candace should have made a report about people posting up pictures of her household on the fucking internet. These people weren't just stalking and harassing me, they were stalking and harassing those who helped me. And the cops refused to take a look at any of that. I had to do desperate things to protect people because these are not fucking people who are joking. The cops are not good fucking people. Erin Cockerham, she could uh, still make a report. Candace could still make a report. They're not gonna. Layla Johnson could make a report. Karamia could make a report. All these people could make a report, but it turns out most of them are just playing fucking head games. Like, how is somebody who's playing fucking head games gonna do any good? Layla Johnson wasn't even a real person. And Dan Fabert knows that. He could have told me that, but he didn't. He didn't. I had to check him on it before he said anything about it. 
I wanted to believe she was a good person, but she was just playing fucking head games. When I started taking uh, screenshots, I mean, I had to go back to, uh, well, a lot of my friends had their Facebooks destroyed because they couldn't provide ID. It's pretty fucked up, so I look back on a lot of that, and that's a problem with a lot of homeless people. They lose their ID or they don't have one, or it's fucking impossible to go get one. I mean, me, I had to travel all the way to Nebraska to get one. They used all these homeless issues to frame me for things that I didn't do. They were supposed to take my report. Everywhere that I went, these people were supposed to take my report. I was begging them to. They refused. After I tried to kill myself and they took me to a Vista hospital, the issue that we were having is that they wouldn't allow me to make a report to a police officer. Everywhere along the line, that's why I tried to get a hold of the FBI who blew me off. Because of the way that I was painted, they didn't want to take a look. None of my lawyers were willing to take a look because they're fucking lazy. They have too many fucking people on their shit. So they spent their time sending me into a fucking panic attack. I needed somebody to go in with me so that they couldn't intentionally send me into a panic attack. I needed someone to go in there with me so that if they lied to me, I had a witness. So, because uh, they scared off Miss Peaches and made her go home on the 29th, and then they did exactly what it is that she was trying to explain to them not to do, literally... Everything they could do to send me into a panic attack to try to twist my words to fit whatever bullshit they wanted it to fucking mean, they did. Now, obviously, they didn't, uh, they didn't tell the truth. They took advantage of the fact that I didn't have enough money to hire a lawyer. And when they assaulted me, like, charges should have been brought against those officers. The tactics that they use, it's called pain compliance. It's torture. I wasn't resisting. They pretended so they could hurt me. All of this could have been avoided by the Bollingers telling the truth. Assisted suicide should be legal for exactly this reason. This is exactly why assisted suicide should be legal for people considered mentally ill. There's your buddy here, motherfucker. People can do whatever they want to me. They can steal from me. They can lie to me. They can lie about me. They can assault me. They can do whatever they want, and I can't do a goddamn thing about it because nobody's in my corner. And I do mean that. I do mean that. So, uh, Alyssa Rainwater, she said that, uh, she could go in with me after I got out of jail and make a report, but as soon as I got out, she started having problems and couldn't, and couldn't, and couldn't, and couldn't. And couldn't. I had to leave state for my own protection. And all these people who said that they wanted to help, I told them how they could help. Assisted suicide should be legal. Nobody should have to go through this. Nobody. Nobody should have to depend on people who victimized them in the past. I wanted to believe that these people would actually help me. Like the... The times they fucked me over in the past were by mistake, by accident. Things just happened to suck, you know? But it turns out, like, yeah, if they 
do it again, obviously, uh, obviously they do it on purpose. Ken and Leah got away with, uh, about $1,600 of my money. If Miss Peaches could, uh, let me stay there for just one more day, I could have gotten everything that I needed to get to the, uh, Broomfield officers. Adams County Detectives, I'm sorry. These people are never going to call me back because then I can verify with them what it is that they did. Like Jeff Ritter saying that he could help me get a lawyer. He'll never answer his phone. I didn't have the ability to record this stuff. I didn't know how. Trying to get them to say the same thing again. I mean, obviously they were lying the first time, and now they know I can record them. I called that, uh, number that Ramos had me call, and that guy wasn't there because he was working on this black dude's case, which they're going to take a few days doing, so I had to call. A different number that's attached to it and that guy let me know that basically he's not gonna do a goddamn thing I tried to get the FBI to take a look they didn't give a fuck they take a look at what's on the internet see the shit that's posted up there I'm painted as a bad guy they looked at the slander and the slander is more important than what I had to say assisted suicide should be legal Please help me get assisted suicide legal. I have to try to coordinate all this from inside of a vehicle and inside of Starbucks. This is not okay. You guys want to drug the fuck out of me and I got... I got statements here from all sorts of people about how medications interact with them and it doesn't work for them either. There's a lot of people who, well, they're fucking stressed. My friend Anna, she used to work with Kinga at the pedestrian shop. She's homeless now. She was there the day that, uh, I found Danny dead. Her boss, Tony DeStasi, he was the one who was going to give Danny mouth to mouth. Danny had been dead for hours. The cops said something in their daily camera report, something about 6 o'clock. I found him dead at 10 o'clock. The cops knew that he was back there and they didn't do shit. And instead of asking me during the interview when they're recording it, they ask me on the way out when they're not recording it. They asked me if I knew who called. Of course I don't know who called. If I'd have been there, I'd have called myself. And I wouldn't have hid my name. I wouldn't have made it anonymous. I'd have said, my name is Sean. My friend Danny won't breathe. He's not moving. <laughs>